Well, it is Friday the 17th of June. Keith is just back about three hours ago from Berlin. He left for the week. And Keith, you left and the entire world economy has collapsed. Maybe you shouldn't take these European jaunts anymore. Yeah, clearly I'm responsible for that. You are. I take it personally. You, The market dropped more this week than any other time, certainly since, uh, since tw- I was going to say 1920. That wouldn't be true. 2020. And the wonderful thing is I didn't even notice because I was so busy, I wasn't watching. So what were you doing in Berlin? Um, Signal Rank was was, um, sponsoring an event called Superventure. And I was on two panels, one at Superventure and one at Super Returns, which uh, both conferences for investors, basically. And um, delivering uh, this message to them, basically. Adapt or die. Are these characters on the screen are they i couldn't work out whether they're 22nd 22nd century characters or characters from the 5th century bc or something exactly they're the borg aren't they andrew surely you know the borg when you see them the borg the borg basically create um it's a very subtle kind of front cover they create this they look like mike arrington one of them anyway (laughs) he won't thank you for that but it's um, the Borg mind where everyone starts to think from the same brain. And uh, it's kind of apt because the stuff in the newsletter this week is many, many people giving the same advice. Uh, so they're all Borgifying their message. Well, you don't always give the same advice. Should we stand back and figure out what's really happening here, Keith? I mean, I guess in my mind, there's one of two scenarios. Either... The market always pops. It's been irrationally exuberant for a while. Or something significant is happening. There's some sort of structural shift. What's your take? I think it's both. Uh, but I think the more scary of the two is structural shift. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I, you know, 2021 uh, in my world, my world's all dominated by seed funds having to find money to invest in B rounds and C rounds and D rounds. That's my world. And last year, about $14 billion was needed if the if the early stage investors who invested up to the A round were going to maintain their shares in companies, they would have needed $14 billion. In a normal year, that number is more like $5 billion. So yeah. last year was roughly three times more aggressive than, than prior years. Um, so that that is the kind of short-term temporal fix, uh, and that's leading to the stock market. Um, you know, SPACs, we've said SPACs are dead for a long time, um, as far back as April last year, actually. Um, but now everyone knows they're dead. And everyone knows that you can't get three or 400 times revenue as a valuation in public markets anymore. So Snowflake and Cloudflare and companies I own shares in and love have all um, lost a lot of value, sometimes up to 90%. That's the short-term correction. The bigger, more structural stuff that's more scary, obviously, doesn't need saying, is when there's a war going on between two European nations, you kind of worry about what where that could go. Um, and so managing, the, uh, containing that while supporting Ukraine is probably a huge thing. And then... Um, the supply chain after a math of COVID, um, which is leading to price rises in all kinds of stuff, and therefore inflation, uh, which is being reacted to by rising interest rates, that changes a lot of the math that these money people use. To but it's more, you can't blame the in- inflation on COVID supply chains or post-COVID mm-hmm. supply chains. It's bound up in there was way there's been way too much easy money over the last decade. What I don't really even understand, and I had uh, Christopher Leonard, who's a very good economic thinker on my show. Why why we haven't had inflation before? The Fed flooded the market with cash. Well, that tells you that, and he doesn't. No one knows the answer. That's why. That's that's the bizarre thing. uh, Well, I'll I'll stake a claim to the answer. Um, I think the evidence is that printing money doesn't cause inflation. Um, It can certainly contribute to it, but the fact that so much money has been printed without inflation is a hint. 
what causes inflation is when the dollar buys less than it did before. Now, there's obviously printing money when there's more dollars can make that happen. The other thing that makes it happen is when things cost more. And things cost more because of supply and demand. Like if you buy a car today, you're going to pay five to $10,000 more than the manufacturer is asking for price. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Uh, food, uh, supply chains on food, the, the wheat coming out of Ukraine being stolen by Russia isn't going to help. So prices go up. So your dollar buys less than it did before. That is the meaning of inflation right there. Clearly, printing money doesn't help either. Um, debt, uh, debt to offset printing money can usually solves most of the inflation that printing money causes, and that and debt's gone way up. So, but when it comes to inflation, how important is inflation in your startup world, in the world of venture investment, in the world of tech? I don't really understand why it should be critical. Well, it, it isn't really. It's gone the other way. In, in startup land, you're now buying more for less money. So it's the opposite of inflation. Um, a company comes along and last year it would have been valued at 20 million. This year it'd be lucky to be valued at 10 million. So, so, so it's a great time to be an investor because everything is cheap, relatively speaking. But it's always the case. There's no cash around. You've got you to have a strong stomach. You have to have a strong stomach. And, and you've got to have the cash. I mean, you have one point. or two things in the newsletter about uh, venture firms that just raise money. They're the lucky ones. There's one that just raised 450 mil. I assume they, they, they signed those deals before this current collapse of the market, have they? Uh, definitely. Or at least they were building the deals before that. You're referring They're to in this. the strongest position, those guys who have 450 million. They shouldn't spare. They should. They're, they're going to get some remarkable deals. Yeah, and I, it was announced this morning that Iconic, which is um, you would think of it in the same part of your brain as Tiger Global, just closed a six billion dollar fund. So, so that there's and and I can tell you in Berlin at this conference, there was no lack of people with money looking to write checks. It, it was everywhere because this is the best time to do that. Last year they were more reluctant, apart from a few. Um, this year, they're all, uh, you know. And what about the bigger, the, the heavyweights, the Sequoias and the Andreessens? I mean, they they don't have any problem raising money, do they? No, Sequoia just announced three new funds that are in the billions when you add them all together, mainly focused on India and Asia um, in that case for those funds. So, so who, are the, who, are the, who are the players now who are really getting hit by this? Are they the, the investors who... You can't just call people up and get money like Andreessen and Horowitz can. Well, firstly, retail investors who um, you know own most of the shares in the companies that are now ninety percent less than they were six months ago. Secondly, your sons, Keith, your boys. Yeah, my son. I can tell you. I'll give you just a clear example. One of my sons has a Robin Hood account, and it was at I think it was close to two thousand dollars. It's now at seven hundred. So. I shouldn't be laughing, but it is kind of funny. I mean, I've been warning about this for a while. I mean, especially on the on the crypto front, it's not a bad and and it's it's much more radical than a correction. I mean, one could even argue it's a collapse. And these, I, I, I'm not celebrating your son losing money, but these kids. I mean, I I read a stat that a quarter, twenty five percent of Korean college students have invested in crypto. And none of these people understand what they were investing in, and they've all lost money now. Yeah, I think, you know, 73% of high net worth Americans have invested in crypto, 73%. But and, did you? You never did. You're smarter than them. I've got a little bit of, of money in Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it's small compared to everything else I've got. But I can tell you my stocks are down more than my crypto. Um, so, so it's all relative. I mean, you, you wouldn't argue that, the joint stock company and the stock exchanges have, you know, uh, act, uh, are not, uh, you know, viable due to this correction. But they've actually corrected more than crypto. So, so well, I think I'm not sure. It depends which crypto you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about some of these Ponzi schemes that went from Luna, yeah, worth right. tens talking... of billions of dollars to being worth zero, that hasn't but... happened to any public stock. 
Yeah, no, I'm talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, the main the main carriers of value. In well, they're down, what, 70%? Um, Bitcoin is down from its peak. It was at 69,000. Today it's at, I don't know, 21,000. So it's down about 66%. Which so is, that, I mean, on the other hand, my stock in Cloudflare is down 90%. So, you know, so all assets, all risk assets are down. And the so, only. And what does this say? And I'm going to do a show about this, a keen on show tomorrow. I already did one this week on crypto. Has. Do we know now that the, the emperor is naked when it comes to crypto? Is there anything really there, there? Well, you know that I'm going to say yes, there is. And well, that's why I'm asking. I think, I think you've got to tell me what it is. What what, what it is, uh, you know, uh, I didn't have time to put it in the newsletter because he only published it today, but Prof Galloway has got a long piece on why crypto uh, is, a, is a false messiah, and he yes. goes into some detail about it. Um, and even he acknowledges that something new is being built. It's just that what's happened is, you know, as in all new things, there's a lot of BS probably the majority is BS. That's been cleaned out or is getting cleaned out. And what's left is the valid stuff. That And that's kind of what happened in the Valley, you know, when Webvan collapsed because it was... Yeah, but Webvan wasn't a criminal enterprise. It wasn't a fraud. I mean, some of these some of these crypto businesses are deeply fraudulent. Which is the one that you, you kept on telling me that we've done... We, we no, kept, it's, yeah, it's in this week's... The news. 17% one that promised, and I kept on saying to you that, defies the law of physics no. simply i don't know i don't understand the market i don't know the company but i guarantee you it will fail and it did well, i'll remind you it's um there's two there's celsius and there's BlockFi. right and they've both gone under no BlockFi hasn't block five celsius hasn't. has celsius has um so you you got to get into the detail to know why so why it, hasn't the other one because it doesn't have leverage in the same way that Celsius does. It, it's all to do with to the extent to which they leveraged uh, loans on top of loans. Um, I got out of Celsius quite a, uh, more than a year ago, uh, but I didn't get out of BlockFi, and I was never in Luna, but I am in uh, USDC, which is a stable coin. So the algorithmic things where where there's leverage i stay away from because they're like packs of cards that can blow over so you've got to look for the stuff that's got substance behind it i, I uh, you know um it's a, clearly a high risk well uh, we know it's high i mean at the best of times it's high risk i i'm still not convinced there's any there then i'll have to read the, the galloway piece there is still good news, or at least in your in your newsletter, you say that Cli Tiger Global is doing better than reported. Well, the reports were pretty dismal. So, what's the Gli the Tiger Global situation? Yeah, so this is um, funny enough written by Jenny, my wife. Um, oh, and uh, be careful, be polite, right? And the title got caught my eyes: Tiger Global startup business holds up against the bear market, which is kind of contrarian in a sense. She got a lot of data from, in quote, somebody familiar with the business, unquote, which shows that the private assets, they sold a lot of the public stocks before the correction last year. For example, they sold a lot of Roblox stock. Yeah. And their private stocks, even after repricing, uh, are still very healthy. So over the whole life of Tiger, they've returned 25% what's called IRR, which is a measure of annual growth in money, to their investors. So even though, um, like everybody, they were hit by the correction in the public markets, it's, it's a relative hit, not an absolute hit, which is different from Celsius, which is, as far as one can see, dead in the water. But Celsius, um, I mean, are, are you, would you be willing to describe some of these, like Celsius, as essentially scams, as Ponzi schemes? Well, that that speaks to intent, Andrew, and I I, I don't believe uh, that, you know who knows you, you never can be sure about this, but on the face of it, I think you could do exactly as badly as Celsius did, whilst believing uh, that you were doing but something. My understanding of something like Celsius is we're guaranteed that that this couldn't happen. It's the same as that Korean platform that went down, and it has. So how can they get so so they must someone is lying. 
No, somebody didn't see the vulnerabilities. Conveniently. Well, it's always convenient when you don't see your own vulnerabilities and you justify massive investment. And what about, you know, coming back to a network like Coinbase, which is more credible. I mean, all these senior executives cashed out. They all knew. I wouldn't say they knew what they were doing, but it it leaves a very, very bad taste, doesn't it? Well, it, it... Cashing out is normal. There's a there's a huge market now called the secondary market where very large money people come come to anything that's growing and offer to buy in the secondary market stocks. And honestly, if you're in one of those companies, you'd be foolish not to take some money off. Well, plus the Coinbase went public, so they the, the people could sell their stock anyway. Yeah, but so, it's always the small. There was a good piece in the in the journal yesterday or the day before talking about. The small investors, the people who put, I mean, I don't know how they could be that dumb, but people putting their $100,000 um, of retirement money, family money, kids' college money into these things. Yeah. You know, yeah. on the one hand, you can think, well, they kind of, they're so dumb that they got what they deserved. On the other hand, your hearts go out to them. And it's particularly troubling that other people, Others, smarter, quicker people have made billions out of this, or certainly millions. Yeah, but what what you're describing is a risk profile. You, I know you well enough to be able to tell our viewers you are one of the least risk takers I know, except in your own life, where you actually do do new stuff and you put yourself on the line. But when when it comes to money, you're not really a risk taker by nature. Right. I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm a total risk taker. I've you know made money and lost it more than once in my life. Um, you know, this week's been great for me. Uh, one of my, I can't tell you who because it hasn't been announced yet, but one of my startups got sold this week for $377 million and, and I'm a shareholder in it. Is that, the, uh, is that the agriculture one? No, nothing to do with them. I can't, I can't talk about it. because okay. But just to tell you, I had a great week this week, but I can tell you weeks where I lost a lot of money. And if you're doing risk, you kind of go in with your eyes open. So I don't know how many gullible, vulnerable people there are. But, but, but this comes back, and we've had this conversation before about regulation in terms of protecting retail investors who are absolutely clueless and who are sucked in and seduced by language. They have no understanding of what these companies are trying to do. They have no understanding of the markets. Yeah. And they might as well just go to a casino. They might as well bet on the horses or on on Manchester United or Tottenham. Well, in the short term, it's all a casino. You're right. Um, But it isn't in the long term. That's the thing. I mean, Amazon, you would have lost 98% of your money in 2000. And if you would have kept it, however, you would have made more than a thousand times your money. So it's really about risk appetite and long-term views and going to things that are the real analysis we have to do here is what's viable and what isn't as opposed to everything being uh, you know either a, a conspiracy or just flawed yeah. um, so All i right, think that so let, let's go on we, we've talked a little bit about the good news the tiger global news which they're doing better than reported they're still not doing very well the bad news coinbase lays off 18 percent. coinbase has behaved particularly badly and I think, or, or maybe they've just become the pinup of irresponsible Silicon Valley startups. Well, you could say they're behaving badly, but having having lived through the uh, bubble bursting at real names, I, I did three layoffs. And honestly, looking back, I wish I'd, I'd done one big one instead of three average size ones, because um, getting ahead of a period like this yeah. Um, getting your costs under control, even though there's a human cost to that, you know, in a way you can't be too emotional about it if you want your company to survive. Well, they're selling the picks. They're selling, they're the Levi's of this business. I mean, they're just the platform for people to trade on, right? Correct. They are, yeah. And, and So they will probably survive. I assume that a lot of their institutional investors like Union Square, they've already cashed out their investment. You would, well, knowing Union Square's modus operandi, I wouldn't be so sure about that. They, they will have cashed out enough to cover their initial bet uh, or more, but they'll certainly have some left. Uh, so what's the worst news of the week, Keith, that might suggest that this is something profoundly has changed rather than just another bust? 
I, I, I think from the point of view of, it depends whose point of view, from the point of view of, of the average consumer, I think it's the, the inflation and the interest rate rise. From the point of view of startup founders, it's this. Uh, as venture dollars slow, deal terms begin trending back towards investors. And, you know, you always feel a bit awkward reading these things, uh, like the Sequoia advice to companies this week, which is, is very deep. And Bill Gurley has a fantastic thread about, you know, don't pretend you can sell through these choppy waters. Do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, I read uh, your thing on Sequoia. It's interesting. Yeah. So now, now if you look at that, you also know that these people have a massive self-interest in the price of startups declining because they buy more and get more upside when the, when the startups end up being worth something. So... I always feel a bit, a bit, um, you know, unclean, agreeing with them. But they are right. They are right. Uh, you, you do have, you have to, uh, you do have to uh, do the things they're saying. Otherwise, you will die. Hence the adapt or die headline this week. Uh, but I, so, I, yeah, I think um, the the well, bad I think it certainly helps to have lived through these before. If you've lived through them, it's less dramatic, and every. If you haven't lived through them, then you just assume the good times will just go on forever, and they never do, right? Yeah, but I can, you know, I can tell you this: Mike would never have done TechCrunch, uh, and I would never have been part of it, had it not been for the bubble bursting in two thousand. TechCrunch was two thousand five. Um, the seven hundred seed funds that exist today would never have existed had it not been for the bubble bursting, because the bubble bursting led to Sand Hill Road stopping investing and opened up a space for angels and accelerators and, and seed investors. So we are, we are in a period now where all the stuff that is stopping will leave a gap that will be filled by people who do new stuff. Adapt um, or die. And I, I was around in, I was an investor, I was an entrepreneur in 99, 2000. So to me, that was the most dramatic one where from one, one week to the next, everything changed so dramatically. Nothing is as dramatic yet. Let's move on to, so things maybe aren't quite as bad as they seem, just as they're not quite as good as they seem in the, but the good days. Essays of the week, Apple's 10-year live soccer deal. I mean, who watches American football, American soccer, Keith? Who cares? Well, well let's, let's be You and I certainly don't. I think you're mostly right, but I'm be, I've been blown away that some of the teams in the MLS can fill a sixty thousand seat stadium, like in Atlanta, in in um, Austin, uh, in Seattle, uh, so, in, sometimes in LA. The Stanford Stadium here, which holds about that number, gets full when um, the San Jose Earthquakes play the LA Galaxy. So it definitely isn't the shrinking violet it used to be. I think it's probably replaced baseball as the second biggest spectator sport in the and US. Also is, so with the World Cup coming in four years, they redone yeah. the stadium. So the problem is I, the- I assume Apple and I mean the bigger players, Apple, Google, this isn't really impacting them, although Facebook still and this comes back to the bad news, Facebook's still struggling to reinvent itself as meta, aren't they? They are massively struggling. Uh, just before we leave the soccer, I will say, I think the meaning of the story, because remember, Apple also bought the rights to Friday night baseball. And there's rumors they're going to get Sunday um, football, um, uh, Sunday ticket. I think Apple is following the Murdoch playbook of realizing that live sport drives subscriptions. And, and, and uh, Amazon's done a bit of that, but it looks like Apple is doubling down on it. So I think we're going to see them bidding for all kinds of live sports. Well, what do you make of the rumor, Keith, that they're going to acquire that was the week, Apple? I've heard they're, they're, they're thinking of offering several hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah. That would be nice, wouldn't it, Andrew? I'd, I'd share it with you if they did. I'd be that generous. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably get 50 cents. <laughs> but on the meta stuff, yeah, you're totally right. Um, uh it's actually quite dramatic, and I don't yet fully understand it, but they've cancelled the uh, this thing behind me. You probably can't see it. Um, I have to turn my screen a bit. This is a portal. That, that it's a fantastic device for doing um, Zoom calls and other stuff like that. They've cancelled it. 
um, and, and have stopped doing consumer facing video stuff. But they've also slowed down their AR glasses. Yeah, I, I was watching this week. I don't usually watch television, but I've been watching the Warriors games. And there are so many ads for these meta devices, and they look so clunky and cumbersome. There's no way they're ever going to catch on. Yeah, well, the, that's why everyone's really focused on on something that more looks like this. Um, and you know, going to you know who's going to pioneer that. It's not going to be Facebook. It's going to be Apple. We all we all assume that that will be true. Although I I do think there's some genuine science problems that haven't been solved to make that possible yet. Well, let's move on to start of the week. We already touched on then uh, Wesley Chan and, and Pega Ebrahimi's new $450 million fund. What are they going to be putting their money into? You know, Wesley invested in one of my companies, Just.me. Right. Uh, he was at Google Ventures then. Well, he can't be he, very smart. Well, let, um, I'm teasing you. You're going to wish you didn't say that in a minute. So, so, so we, Wesley actually is a wonderful human being. He's very I'm sure generous. He's wonderful. I'm not and he's, and, he, and he's smart. But the biggest news is uh, he's just recovered from cancer. Yeah. And he's teamed up with uh, a colleague who he was in college with, and they've raised this fund, and they're going to do all stages, um, uh, 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 you know, seed A and beyond. And uh, I put it in a startup of the week just because if you can imagine the the human side of going through cancer, yet having the optimism to raise a fund and then getting the backing, in, in, in the challenge that he would have faced getting the backing, I just think he's an admirable human being, and I wanted to shine a light on him. So I, I, I saw that he invested in Play. What is the state of play with? played the, the the visa deal got unraveled yeah i think they're fine because they're, they're 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 basically validating um uh bank account details behind the scenes yeah i mean they're 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 the plumbing of not of crypto but of fintech they're essential plumbing so they're, they're, they're essential plumbing of fintech and and i do you know it's funny uh, we didn't put it in the newsletter because it's only just happened but elon musk when he did his twitter uh, employee meeting today talked about Twitter should be doing payments and it should be validating people through the payment card without necessarily uh, needing to use their real name, which I which is basically played. Um, so, so I think yeah, that's well, right, yeah, yeah. Right, it's a nice position to be an investor in play. They all began at a Tech Crunch uh, startup event, and finally. Uh, Start uh, not startup of the week. We've done them. Tweet of the week, Keith. So, tweet. Have you noticed how these days my newsletter is everything of the week? I yeah, and it's much it, better. It's much easier to navigate. You've done a good job. Or before it was terrible. It was confusing. Now it's good. Wow! Wow! So certainly, maybe maybe we can thank inflation or crypto collapse for the improvement in the newsletter. I think we should stop the show right there. You praising me for something which is a, is is a rare event, but. Uh, tweet of the week is a person that I'm reading more and more, Samir Kaji, because he's writing more and more. He he's from um, he's from a, a seed fund uh, aggregator. Uh, so he basically lets people like you and me invest in seed funds by allow, allowing crowdsourced money to go in as a LP in a seed fund, uh, which is innovative. So it means he's got his finger on the pulse of what's going on. And this was about how hard it is for a fund manager to raise new funds. Um, and he thinks that up to 90% of the firms in the market will struggle. And uh, there's a long thread. It's not just one. I just, uh, if, if uh, people click on his, you'll see the whole thread. It's very, very detailed and very, very long. And it is really, really good um, as, a, as a genuine kind of sense of where the market's at. And he's increasingly good at doing that. Uh, is really worth following and reading. Tweet of the well, week. These people always say since 2008. I mean, yeah. the world economy almost collapsed then. We're not at that point. I mean, had the banks not been bailed out, God knows what would have happened. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because capitalism was on the line in 2008. And what's on the line now is investment money in public market companies. <laughs> so it's a much smaller problem from a world historical point of view. Uh, but once you layer in inflation and the war in Ukraine, it could easily spiral out of control. So somebody has to keep an eye on things. 
Well, I'm not sure if anyone's keeping an eye on the war on war in Ukraine, but we will certainly be back next week unless the world completely collapses. Uh, Keith will be less jet lagged, more energetic, although I think you did a pretty good job given that, what is it, about four in the morning Berlin time now, Keith? Uh, just add nine on to, on to uh, 17 uh, and you get to 26, oh. which is... No, it's two in the morning. Yeah. Well, you did well. You impressed. You went to Berlin. You came back. You did. That was the week. <laughs> and that was the week for uh, Friday, J- June the 17th. It's hard to imagine that the markets will collapse even more by the 24th, but we will all see you in a week where we will talk more about tech and crypto and all these other wonderful things. So have a good week, Keith, and we'll talk next week. Uh, Will do. Thank you.